All right, so before we get into the charts and before we get into this article by Forbes, I do want to get into this video. This was on CNBC this morning where uh, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong uh, responds to Gary Gensler's uh, lawsuit on the company in which he was on CNBC yesterday. Let's get into it. He's suing crypto exchange Coinbase in New York uh, federal court, the agency alleging Coinbase was operated as an unregistered exchange and broker. Joining us right now, first on CNBC, is Coinbase's CEO, Brian Armstrong. Good morning to you. Uh, we've been debating this uh, at the table for really the last three hours, frankly, already. But uh, we're glad to have you at the table to, to, to join in on this discussion. Um, help us understand from your perspective, when you first saw this lawsuit, uh, what your reaction was, and, what, and, and to the extent that you have a defense, and I know you've, got, you've taken it to Twitter, but now you can take it to the airwaves, uh, what it is. Yeah, well, I mean, we were disappointed to see this complaint from the SEC because I feel like we've had a long history of being very transparent with them, and really every regulator around the world that we've worked with. So even going back to 2021, when we became a public company, you know, before becoming a public company, you have to disclose everything about your business in depth. There was many back and forth revisions of our S1, and frankly, you know, they, they had every, all the knowledge then and they allowed us right. to become a public company. And then we're going through time and, you know, Chair Gensler has statements to Congress saying that he doesn't feel he has the authority to regulate this industry. And we're seeing conflicting statements from the CFTC and the SEC chair. And we even filed a formal petition with the SEC asking them for clarity about a number of points in the law, which they never responded to. And then this Wells notice and, and a complaint arrives. And so this isn't good for America. Um, it's not good for the industry, obviously. And we now need to go get clarity from the courts. I, I want to show you, uh, Chair, Chair Gensler was on C, uh, CNBC yesterday. I, I want to show you a clip and get you to react, uh, if, I, if I could. Take a look at this. In the Coinbase uh, uh, complaint, we note that they have, through the Coinbase wallet, you can trade 16,000 different tokens. And there's a lot of debate as to the use cases and whether there's any there, there. Look, we don't need more uh, digital currency. We already have digital currency. It's called the US dollar, it's called the euro, it's called the yen. They're all digital right now. We already have digital investments. And you, you have digital, you have entrepreneurs representing digital investments on this program all day long. And it's, it's whether it's the big tech companies, the automobile companies, uh, you name it. It's all digital right now, the investing world. So what is the real underlying value of these tokens? And that's why you need full, fair, and truthful disclosures. Do you think this is about disclosures uh, or do you think this is about the underlying currencies that are on, on your exchange? It's tough to know what exactly what he means by that. I mean, um, our self-custodial wallet uh, is not trading crypto. Uh, the ones that he, he mentioned, some huge number. That's happening in DeFi. That, that's not something that we actually operate the trading of. Our centralized exchange is really trading a much smaller number of assets. We've we reviewed you know over a thousand assets in crypto. We rejected ninety percent of them because we felt right. they weren't appropriate for our exchange, and about two hundred of them are listed on our, our centralized product. And I don't know, to his, to his point about you know, what's the there there, right. um, people are using crypto for all kinds of things. They're not just trading, and they're doing payments with it. You know, Ukraine raised $200 million, and presidential candidates are taking it. And it's a new technology that can be used to update all kinds of financial right. services. And we don't, we don't need the government picking and choosing our technology right. winners. Let's let the market decide that. Uh, when you spoke just earlier about the IPO and the IPO process and the back and forth that you had with the SEC, I think implicit within what you were saying was that they approved us as a business. And yet the prospectus itself, as you know, also says very clearly that effectively the SEC has not opined on the underlying business itself. And in fact, that the company can't actually legally say uh, publicly that, that the SEC has. Do you agree with that? Well, they allowed us to become a public company understanding the S1, right? And so I feel like that's our moment to be totally transparent with them, show them everything about our business and how it operates. And so it's not great to have a regulator sort of come back later and say, actually, we changed our mind. Um, well, this but is they, already they, Brian, they didn't company. change their mind. We had John Stark, the former SEC Office of Enfor Internet Enforcement Chief for 11 years. He was on earlier. He said it's very specific that in the IPO, the SEC does not bless, does not approve these things. And it says very specifically they could come back and say, that there is additional 
um, regulation that's required or additional yeah. disclosures or additional filings. And I think what they're very specific about is you call yourself an exchange, you call yourself a broker dealer when it comes to prime. Those are things that you need to register for if you're going to be, uh, you know, either an exchange or a broker dealer, just like the NASDAQ or the NYSE would have to. Well, so a couple points. One is that if you're trading commodities, you know, that doesn't necessarily apply, right? We have actually gone out there and acquired a broker dealer license because we wanted the ability to trade crypto securities. There's actually, I think there could be a big, robust market of crypto securities trading in the US, even though we don't list any securities today. Um, and by the way, I think you're right. The regulator does have the right to come, you know, edit their thinking at times and come back and say, you know, here's a new set of rules. And great, we'd be happy to follow those. The issue in this case is that we're getting conflicting statements from the CFTC head and the SEC head. And then the statements from the SEC are, are so, you know, out, uh, such an outlier. They're saying everything other than Bitcoin is a security. Well, that's not our interpretation of the law. That's not what the law says. And so, and that's not what the position of every other country around the world, their financial regulators, is taking. And so I don't think we really had a choice, honestly. We had to go to court to really see if this, otherwise this industry is just not going to exist in the United States if we warning, took that position. Warning there could be additional regulation is one thing, but, but you know, bringing enforcement action on something you knew full well at the time was, was occurring, that I don't see how, how all of a sudden you make that, that leap. That just seems arbitrary and capricious and vindictive, almost. That, that is a regulation by enforcement approach. And, you know, we met with the SEC 30 times in the last year. They never gave us a single piece of feedback about what we could be doing better. We just got silence. And when we asked them, how would you like us to register? You know, we have this dormant broker dealer license. Could we activate that? We, got, we really got silence. And so it's not appropriate for the regulator to come back and, and do an enforcement action if we don't have a clear rule book and clear guidance. So yesterday the okay, so I knew Kathy would have been buying Coinbase in the past. And I knew that she bought the the dip in the past. And I was wondering if she bought yesterday. So I actually did a search and she bought the dip. This is from Forbes. Kathy Woods ARC adds twenty one million in Coinbase stock. Bucking analyst dire outlook. Taking advantage of slumping stock prices following a regulatory lawsuit, three funds of ARC investment management, led by high profile stock picker. Kathy Woods added almost 420,000 shares of Coinbase, according to its trade disclosure. ARK is the fourth largest holder of Coinbase, according to Bloomberg, and it has a history of snapping up crypto stocks during market dips. The company bought more than 60 million in Bitcoin and other crypto stocks in November 2022 as crypto giant FTX filed for bankruptcy. Woods has doubled down on Coinbase during previous stock price dips this year, buying more than 350,000 shares worth $20 million in March, despite Coinbase stock falling 8%. Analysts largely voiced concerns about the SEC's lawsuit impact on Coinbase revenue and stock value going forward, calling it certainly a negative. John Todaro, a senior research analyst at Needham and Company, told Forbes it puts all coins key business lines under scrutiny. Mozilla Securities estimates that the lawsuit puts more than a third of Coinbase revenue at stake as the lawsuit sheds light on the extent of the SEC's plan to crack down on the crypto industry. So we've seen in, in recent weeks Coinbase announcing that they are going um, internationally due to the uncertainty of the regulatory laws in the U.S. But nevertheless, Kathy continues to buy Coinbase and buys the dip. And that's the name of the game. You want to buy low and sell high. Now let's go to the stock chart and we're going to go right to the uh, daily chart but you can see um, on the monthly chart price is currently at 52 and yes it has to get through the 70 to 80 dollar range um, but you know longer term target remains 120 all right, so now if we go straight to the daily chart, we can see that this, this level at the $50 has been holding up quite well, meaning the buyers are continuing to defend this, this zone at the $50, right? Uh, the zone was formed back in January uh, when price kind of paused and then spiked higher. 
we had a dip into the zone let's do it this way so I can show you we, we had a dip into the zone about 30 percent before prices um, reacted and, and went higher it dipped again back in May now price dipped below uh, the previous dip because it had to find the next level of unfilled orders all right um, so it did find that level where they were unfilled buy orders and price reacted now price declined on the news uh, early this week and it had to go even lower into the to the level to find those unfilled buy orders uh, on the day it closed positive and then today we have a gap higher so now we know uh, Kathy Woods was buying the dip <laughs> she was buying this level here um, now if this zone happens to get breached meaning a close below uh, the lower level of the zone at say 45 then your next level of buyers are going to step in uh, near the $34 level but if price um, can move higher if the buyers take control um, look for a first target um, at the $56 level and let's put that in green and why am I choosing 56 well that's where price was holding before uh, the news brought prices way down the other day and then I have a second target at the gap um, fill which would be at 58 so um, if you happen to buy the dip, uh, take some off the table if and when price can get to the 56 to 58 dollar range. I don't think Kathy's going to take anything off the table. I think she's playing the Coinbase long game. And so potentially her target um, is going to be the at least the first target, the monthly sellers level at 120. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Please like the video.